Well, today I've been setting in one of my crossbows, which gave me the idea I could talk a little bit about the difference between modern and medieval crossbows. Now that I'm getting back into it, I'm really noticing just how much of an improvement modern crossbows are. And I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure many people are aware of that. So I've set up three distances. This here's 15 meters or yards about. And um, at this distance, I can, I should be able to consistently hit that target over there. So let's see. So for ease of use, this is actually pretty good. I don't have to put it down on the ground and use a stirrup. I can actually just push it against my thigh, use the goat's foot lever to hook in to the string, pull it back. It's pretty easy to pull back. And there we go, no big deal. Uh, the the draw weight of this, I would consider it a light crossbow. It's only 350 pounds, which people always find hard to believe. And we went through the trouble of, of measuring it in a very unconventional, but still halfway accurate way. It is indeed 350. <laughs> yeah, that one is too blunt. It won't stick. It loses a lot of that power, or rather it doesn't transfer it, because you have such a tiny, short power stroke. Imagine you drew a bow this far. That's what we're dealing with here. That's why you need so much draw weight, and it's still comparatively weak. This, on the other hand, now we're talking, this is 900-something, uh, I forgot, but I'll, I'll put it in the video. Unfortunately, there seems to be something wrong with the trigger mechanism. I, I wanted to try this out as well and it seems it doesn't it doesn't engage anymore so I'm setting it there trigger clicked it should have engaged it should hold it now but as you can hear it doesn't so I can't shoot it right now I have no idea what's going on here. There isn't much I can do about that because there's no pins that I can push out. This is all riveted. So I would have to grind off the heads of the rivets, push them out, uh, disassemble the thing to hopefully figure out what's wrong, then put it back together and rivet it again, which I can. I'd rather not. It does engage. And if I push on here, it's fine. So it seems to function, but it, it's not supporting the weight. I don't really know why, because I haven't used this a whole lot. Anyway, so regardless of what the issue is here, I've noticed there is a bunch of problems with, with the traditional medieval crossbow. Uh, for one, it tends to fray quite a bit. So this is a linen string, which has been waxed, and with use, quite a lot of the fibers tear up and, and fray, so that it's not the most durable thing in the world. There's quite a bit of maintenance involved, which of course there is with modern crossbows as well, but I've had a few issues with the other crossbow as well. So the, the trigger mechanism, sometimes, you know, sometimes the wood swells up, and then the nut doesn't rotate freely anymore. I've had some other issues as well, like sometimes this can loosen up here, because this is held in place with steel wedges. And if that loosens up, then this entire thing may shift. And if the prod shifts a little bit to the left or right, then the accuracy is going to be thrown off. You'll, you'll be shooting left or right. So there's a number of things that can be thrown off here. Okay, so now for direct comparison, here's the cold steel cheap shot, which is also a light crossbow. It's not compound and doesn't have brutal draw weight. So this is 130 pounds. So this is quite a bit lighter because modern materials are being used, polymer and all that. It has integrated caulking mechanism, makes it very convenient. And so this fulfills the same role, basically, as, as that other crossbow. It's a light crossbow that, you know, isn't particularly difficult to use. It's fairly quick to span and all of that. So this one, 
I have a red dot on here. So that is pretty easy to aim with, of course. And this is very, very quick. Probably have to aim a little lower at this distance. Yeah, zeroed it for about 30 meters. So shooting a bit high here, but it's pretty easy. Okay, now I'm out at 30 meters, so twice the distance. So I have to aim substantially higher. So I've actually, I've often doubted this thing myself, I have to say. Like, I'm, I'm not surprised that people don't believe that it's, it's the draw weight that it is, because it seems really weak, you know, compared to modern crossbows. And I've done what I can to check that it's functioning properly. I've been maintaining it. I have uh, tightened the, the string. After a certain number of shots, it stretches a bit. So you have to restore that. And I did that and it seems to be working the way it should. It's just not very powerful. Okay, I'm aiming really high now. Still too, too low. Trying to show you the distance with this picture here. I'm gonna put the, the tip of the bolt at the top edge of the archery net. Okay, that was a bit too high. This bolt has a much heavier tip, so I'm gonna aim the same way. And that should hit it then, I think. Yeah, that did hit it. It was a tad bit off to the right, but it hit. The other thing is maintenance. This, you have to maintain quite a bit. You have to wax the string. I mean, you also have to wax the string on a modern crossbow, but not as much. There's also not as much surface area. And here, of course, you also have the, uh, the steel parts that you have to keep oiled or waxed to prevent them from rusting. And yeah, you have to frequently tap those wedges again and, and make sure everything is aligned. And I don't even want to imagine what it would be like to shoot this in the rain. If the wood swells up so much that the nut can't rotate freely anymore, you're losing a lot of power. But this is about a torso sized target. So it's not super large. So I can hit it, but it's, it's not a tight group. And I've actually shot the medieval crossbow more than I have this. So I have less practice with the modern one, but let's see, let's see how I can do here. So that was definitely a lot more accurate and I didn't have to try hard for it. Um, the nice thing about this is you have an actual trigger as opposed to just a lever. So this gives you way more control and you can really squeeze it nicely to get quite a lot of precision. Okay. Now it's getting interesting. We are at about 40 meters, maybe a, a little bit more, and it's, um, it's not looking like a large target anymore. So I'm going to have to aim really high with this. Let's see. Right and low. I have to aim absurdly high for this. And in fact, even more so with the heavy point. Five target heights above it. That was too low. Basically the crossbow is obscuring my target. So I have to aim with both eyes open so that my left eye can still see where the target is, because otherwise I can't even really aim in, in terms of windage. At this distance already, it drops off substantially. I really wish I could use the other one right now. I just can't figure out what on earth is wrong with the trigger mechanism. So let's see if I can do this. Aiming really freaking high. Yeah, I did it! <laughs> it's basically guesswork because I can't see the target properly. The, the, the crossbow is hiding it 
and yeah. <laughs> However, if I was aiming at a mass of people, you know, on the battlefield, pff, who cares, right? You're gonna hit something. So let's see how much easier it is with the cheap shot. <laughs> Seems very appropriate. I'm gonna be taking a cheap shot. <laughs> I have to figure out how high to hold at this distance. I've already adjusted the red dot as far up as it goes. It's not meant, it's not made for crossbows, so. I'm gonna have to aim quite a bit higher. One target above it. One target height, I mean. I can't even begin to describe how much easier this is. Um, you could argue I'm cheating because I'm using the sight, but that's kind of part of the package, you know? <laughs> Modern crossbows are designed to be used with scopes or red dots, and I'm only using a red dot. I'm not, not using a scope. Okay, just for fun, let's see if I can aim without the sight. So I'm going to be aiming with the point of the bolt and to be lining that up with the top of the, uh, the rail here. So it's like having an iron sight, basically. So I'm not using the red dot now. I have really no idea where to aim, but we'll find out. That's actually the exact opposite problem. That went way too high, like dramatically too high. <laughs> I actually hit the workshop. Yep, that's why I've got it set up here. There's a safe backstop. Undesirable to hit it, but it's safe. That is pretty high up. But that's the only way I can aim, you know, in combination with the, with the point of the bolt. So let's see if I can figure this out. So aiming with the bolt all the way low. That was too low. Obviously, aiming like this is way harder. So if I had a red dot sight on the medieval crossbow, I could probably do a lot better. But I just want to figure this out, see if I can make this work. So in this case, the trick is just, I need to bring the group higher or lower. Whereas with the medieval crossbow, the group in and of itself is way larger. You know, if I aim or try to aim at the exact same point, which I really can't, it's, it's still going to, you know, vary a lot more. Ha! There you have it. Um, with less practice, you can be a lot more accurate with modern crossbow. I also wanted to do a comparison of the power, you know, by measuring the, the velocity and then calculating the kinetic energy with the weight of the bolts, but this has already taken most of the day and it's getting late and dark, so I'm gonna have to do that another time. Yeah, I didn't even get to this beast here. It's dramatically more powerful and 40 meters is basically nothing for it. So that wouldn't have even have been fair in any way. Hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching.